Welcome to Black and Gold Digital Edition, a behind the scenes look at your Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi everyone, I'm Jay Pushkar alongside Mike Fenner and Kent Urbanski. Welcome to another digital show and guys, the bye week's over for us and it was a very nice bye week. How did you spend the time off of not having to worry about the Steelers for at least a week putting everything together that we do on a weekly basis? Well, I celebrated a 15 year wedding anniversary. So oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So I spent a little time with my wife and, uh, and the family and uh, just enjoyed not having the, all the hustle and bustle of uh, getting ready for black and gold on Sundays, you know? Mm -hmm. Mike, what about you? Uh, honestly, I was still kind of fully locked in, just <laughs> thinking about, okay, what do they need to do to get back into this thing? Right. What do they need to do to get, you know, uh, back on track in the AFC? So I've, I kind of spent that time still looking at, like, the AFC playoff picture mm -hmm. and, and right. of course, obsessing over it, because right. what, what else would I do? And likewise here, it was a matter of, what do we still need to do? I mean, even though right. we have a week yeah. off, we always yeah. have to look ahead to not get behind the eight ball right. and stuff. So. The, the really bye week was nice, right. but you never stop thinking right. about it, as you just mentioned, right. as we get ready for the Steelers and the Dolphins coming mm -hmm. up. And, guys, this is a perfect setup for the Steelers, even though they're 2-4. and four. The schedule plays into their favor as the Dolphins coming in mm -hmm. winless. They're going to start a three-game homestand coming up as well. Before they know it, they could possibly get back into it. Now, granted, they have the Colts and the Rams coming up, but... Right. All those games are at home. They've got a chance to get back them, get themselves back into this thing. Right. Had Baltimore lost um, their game uh, uh, at Seattle, I'd, I'd feel a little better about this mm -hmm. game meaning a little bit more. But either way, you still got to win. You still, you know, you can't go back to a losing streak. You got to stay on a roll and, and build on what you have. And really, uh, you know, it's, it's time for these younger guys to see what, see what they have in them. You know, so. That's, that's what I, I'm looking for in this game right here. Win the game first. You've got to get a W here. Right. And you almost feel like if the Steelers just show up, they're going to win. Right. But we've seen just in recent weeks that the Dolphins, they're going to put up a fight, even though a lot of people are thinking right. that they're tanking to try to get the top pick. They are still playing pretty hard. They did pretty well in Buffalo. They also played pretty well down in Washington. But again, look at that competition as well. So the Steelers really can't take this for granted. No, absolutely not. Uh, they pushed a very, very good Buffalo team kind of to the brink and made them a little bit more uncomfortable than they thought they would be. And that's a really elite Bills defense, too. And the, the Dolphins are still able to put up points. So. Uh, these guys are pros, too. I mean, they, they've got pride. Mm -hmm. These guys don't want to go out there and, and just no. willingly lose this game. I mean, you've got plenty of talent on the offense. Devontae Parker's a guy that's capable at receiver. They've got talented players. Mike Gesicki, the, the Penn State tight end. I mean, there's options that they have, but uh, they just have to put it together, and Pittsburgh's going to not allow that to happen. And, Mike, going back to practice this week on Wednesday, you had a chance to see the team. How did they feel? How did they look being able to have some time off, kind of refresh the batteries a little bit, and then get ready for this matchup? Well, amped up and glad to see their quarterback back out there, Mason Rudolph. Uh, good to see him kind of clear that uh, concussion protocol. And uh, it, we were only able to see, obviously, individual periods and not, not able to see the full extent of what he's able to do. But from all indications, it seems like and it sounds like he's, you know, kind of back in the fold there. And obviously, Mike Tomlin wants to go with him if he's the number one option uh, in terms of health. So it sounds like a pretty good deal on offense. But, hey, when you got Duck Hodges, it's not a bad backup option <laughs> right. to have because wow. he's capable of winning a game on the road. That's huge. And, Kent, what does this say about the offense, too? I mean, they've really had to go with a mash unit, and these guys are still being able to step up. The numbers aren't going to be there, and you wouldn't really expect that. But right. they're going out there, and they're competing, and they've been able to at least pick up one win when Hodges was in the lineup a couple weeks ago. James Conner. Mm -hmm. Give him the football, you know, give him the football in some space. <laughs> you know, let Quarterback's him, best friend. Right, let him do what he does best, and I think they'll be okay. The defense I'm a little worried about. They're banged up, you know, especially if TJ can't go, TJ mm -hmm. Watt. He's got that abdominal strain. A yep. um, little bit weak now with uh, what's going on with Anthony Ciccolo. Going to lose him and, you know, pull up some reserve guys to fill in those gaps. A little worried about the depth and, and losing um, – uh, stuff on to it is huge. We're going to finally yeah. see what Tyson Alu Alu, who was a first round draft pick, mm -hmm. if, he, if he can fill in that hole. And the thing is, this defense was really coming together, too. I mean, yeah, they were generating yeah. takeaways. They were really shortening up the field for this mm -hmm. offense, especially with what we know mm -hmm. about the quarterback situation. It's been well documented. So mm -hmm. this defense was starting to click on all cylinders. And mm -hmm. now let's see how that injury bug kind of right. affects this lineup and just their aggressive nature moving forward against the Dolphins, especially. And, and guys, another primetime game for the Steelers. It seems like almost every week they're either playing on a Sunday night or a Monday night. Right. They fared pretty well against the Bengals 
Eagles a, a couple Monday nights ago. Do you guys see the same scenario with this team going into into Heinz Field and just feeding off the crowd and off the off the lights of a Monday night game? Yeah, I mean, I'd be horribly disappointed and very surprised if they don't go right. out there and play that way from the start. I think. Yeah, you know, you're bound to have a pretty good start in this game, and and once they get that lead, I just think everything completely changes the way you can call the game, both offensively right. and defensively, and just kind of peel back and get after whoever's playing quarterback, whether it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, Josh Rosen, or both of them. Kent, there's got to be a difference too from a Sunday afternoon game to being in prime time, and as right. fans that don't normally get to go to these games, they may not see the difference, but you get to see it on a regular basis, being right. able to be down on the field covering the game. Is that difference very noticeable? Yeah, yeah, the energy level's up. You know, it's the end of the work day. Everybody's ready to, you know, they've been there a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, um, hanging out, partying before. And, you know, it's just the excitement of, of a night game versus, uh, versus a day game. And really, guys, it's, it's almost like the Steelers are having back-to-back home games after that the, right. the Steeler <laughs> fans showed up in L.A. the way they did. So and you see how the Steelers uh, out there showed up in a night game out there with the fans. So coming home, I think they're going to be ready to go. Still can't believe they played Renegade. I know. Uh, no. oh, uh, how about that? The story yeah. after that and yeah. the, the and Charger, just, yeah, Charger players being upset about <laughs> yeah, it. I where think it's like, should be. You, you know? look at the attendance, though. They should right. look into their own city and say, hey, we, right. need, we need more support than just worrying about what was being played over the loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. Guys, could this be a trap game, too, per se, usually on paper, when you take a look at the you schedule? It's that. a home game, but also you've got the first place Colts, and then you've got a, the defending NFC champion Rams coming into town. And is there a trap where you could probably, you know, overlook these yeah, two games? there's always that that scare that it, that it could be especially coming off the bye maybe having a little bit of rust but I'm, I'm not worried about Ryan Fitzpatrick the Steelers have kind of always <laughs> had his, had his number a lot of teams up. have had his you, number right you put a little I mean he can hurt you in ways mm -hmm. but I, I think this Steeler team is just a little bit too good to to fall to this team on a Monday night. He gave Pittsburgh quite a scare in Tampa Bay Monday night last year. Well, he <laughs> did, and he came off, what, three, 400-yard-plus games? Yeah. But then once they started getting to him, and, right. they, and I think there was a Bud Dupree pass interception for six against him. Oh, once yeah. that all happened, then it, he went in the tank from there. I'm looking for that to happen tonight, or uh, Monday night as well. Yeah. Guys, what's going to be the key come Monday night for the black and gold? Be who you are. Just continue to establish that identity. Keep that identity. And I think... Kent said it best with giving James the ball. Connor's got to be a huge factor and kind of just do what he did yeah. against the Chargers because I think that's the most effective version of him. I think that allows the offense to be the most effective version of themselves. Kent, what about you? Time of possession. Own it, mm -hmm. and you'll win this game. Yeah, I think so, yeah, especially the it. way this Dolphins offense right. really doesn't generate a lot of points. No, no, just if you uh, can control that ball, I mean. Long, sustained drives. Get off to a fast start. Maybe have a good six- or seven-minute drive for a touchdown to start the game, own the time of possession, and, and I think it should be an easy game. All right, guys. Well, we'll see. I'm winless at Heinz Field this year, just to <laughs> let you know. You guys will be down at the game covering right. it, and so far you guys have been able to pick up at least a victory on a Monday night against the Bengals. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can bring up another victory come Monday night against the Dolphins, and we'll see how the Steelers do from here on out M as those, the season progresses. Makes those two, three o'clock in the morning getting home after those games a little easier if they win. That's right. <laughs> and since I'm going, it's probably going to be a blowout. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be over by halftime yeah. the way your trend is, but yeah. you'll still take the victory there you go. any day of the week. Yep. All right, guys, well, thank you so much, and thank you for watching this edition of our digital show. Enjoy the game, mm -hmm. and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week for Black and Gold Digital Edition.